Hello, class. Um, just pretend you saw nothing there. Today we're going to talk about dynamic equilibrium. So we'll just go into the slides here like any normal day. We'd already talked a little bit about dynamic equilibrium. Uh, so we're going to see more specifically how that affects reactions. So we saw before dynamic equilibrium with vapor pressure where we know um, a certain amount of vapor will escape and then some of that vapor will condense and those two processes will happen until they reach equilibrium. Well, we have the same thing with a reaction. We're used to seeing maybe two reactants coming together, making a product. We have reactions that can happen not only in the forward direction, but also in the reverse direction. So what we may see is when we have no product, we're only gonna have the reaction proceeding in the forward direction, but at some point when we get product, we'll also see the reverse reaction happening. So at some point, um, those two processes are gonna, gonna equilibrate and we'll reach reaction equilibrium. So that's that dynamic equilibrium, but now in relation to a reaction. So what's the rate of making products and what's the rate of those products maybe decomposing and going back to the reactants. So here's an example. We have hydrogen and iodine, H2 and I2, and they react, they come together, and for every H2 molecule and I2 molecule, we get two HIs. So if we start at time zero, where we only have, um, reactants and no products, the reaction can only occur in the forward direction. So we'll have a very large rate going in the forward direction and no rate going in the reverse direction. And here we can see eight and eight for the concentration of each of these and zero for the concentration of that HI. At 16 seconds, now the reaction has started to happen. So we can see in this case, we have mostly H2s and I2s, but we have some of those products. And we could potentially now see the reverse reaction occurring. So you can see we have six H2s, six I2s, and four of the HIs. And at time 32 seconds, now we have more products than we do re uh, reactants. So the forward reaction is going to slow, and the reverse reaction would be accelerated until, of course, we reach whatever that equilibrium is. Uh, time 48. Now the amount hasn't changed. So the reactions reached equilibrium. Whatever the forward uh, direction or the for rate of the forward reaction is, it's equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. It's reached equilibrium. So what does that look like? Um, so obviously, here's an example. We have our two lines. We have our concentration of H2 and our I2 over time and the concentration of the product, the HI over time. So we can see initially when there's no um, uh, products, we would have a high concentration of the or reactants and none of the products. These are going to start to decrease very rapidly. This would increase very rapidly, but at some point we'll hit equilibrium and you'll see that the concentrations of these no longer change. There's all kinds of different types of reactions. For this one, the product is favored, meaning at the point of equilibrium, there's more product than there is reactants. We could see other types of reactions where the reactants are favored and at the point they hit equilibrium, we still have more concentration of reactants than we do products or their concentrations could even be equal. The concentrations themselves don't necessarily tell us anything. It's just the point where they stop changing. When those rates are equal, that's when we hit equilibrium. Um, so here we can see, there's a slightly different example. And like it says, equilibrium does not mean equal. That's what you saw here. These concentrations are not equal. In this case, the product is favored over the reactants. All that means is that the rates are equal. The rate of the forward reaction and the rate of the reverse reaction are equal. And we could have some reactions where, like I said, the products are favored, so the concentration of the products are higher than the concentration of the reactants. We could have some where they are actually equal concentrations, or we could see others where the concentration of the reactants is favored over the concentration of the products. So the only thing you can assume about equilibrium is that the rates are equal. They make an analogy here with population. So let's say we have these two countries and we have a bunch of people in country A and a bunch of people in country B. Well, we have emigration from one country to the other. So let's say over in country B, there's a tree that grows um, uh, 
Snickers bars. So everybody from country A is going to go over to country B. So the rate of immigration from one country to the other, they're not equal. Well, at some point, maybe when the, the populations are equal relative to the amount of land mass or whatever, the immigration is going to be equal. So we might see that two people are always going from country B to A and vice versa. Now, the overall numbers here, we may see that country B has less people total than country A, but the rate of immigration back and forth is equal. Exact same thing. Um, so which statement does not generally apply to a chemical reaction in dynamic equilibrium? The rates of the forward and reverse reaction are equal. The concentration of the reactants and products are constant or the concentrations of the reactants and products are equal. So which one does not apply? C. The rates should be equal, and once we hit equilibrium, we should no longer see a change in those concentrations, but those concentrations are not necessarily the same. Uh, so this brings us to equilibrium constant. So for every reaction, some are product favored, some are reactant favored, so they're going to have different equilibrium or points or different equilibrium states. What we're going to see then is that for every reaction, we have a different equilibrium constant. That's what is going to let us predict what are those concentrations at equilibrium and which one is more favored. Um, so really simple, capital K is your equilibrium constant. You're going to have some basic reaction with reactants and products. It should be a reversible reaction that can proceed in the forward and reverse direction. And to set that up, you're going to set up products over reactants, or sorry, more specifically, the concentration of the products over the concentration of the reactants. And you'll see also that each of those compounds is raised to the power of its stoichiometric coefficient. So they have that lowercase a in front of the a here, it's raised to that. So if this was a two, a would be raised to two, the second power. If three was in front of this b, if this lowercase b was a three, concentration of b would be raised to the third power. So according to the law of mass action, what is the correct expression for the equilibrium constant of the low reaction? Here we have 2A plus B equals 3 or goes to form 3C. So again, we've got to do products over reactants. So we need C on the top. So right at the bat, this example right here, we toss it out. Now we also have to not multiply by this coefficient. So B is right out and A is out because it doesn't account for those coefficients at all, we have to raise it to that power. So D would be the correct answer because C is raised to the third power, A is raised to the second power, and B is technically raised to the first power. Writing equilibrium constant expressions. So what does that look like in a real reaction? Here we go. 2 and 2O5 gives us 4 NO2 and 1 O2. And we can just write that out like that. Let's jump into here for a second. We had four and two, no. Two and two oh five and NO two. Two N two O five gas and forward and reverse direction gives us four N O two and let's see here we have ten eight and an O two that should be it yep everything's in the gas phase so I'm going to start with my products I put the brackets over them that indicates concentration. Coefficient here is a four, so I'd raise that to the fourth power. That would be multiplied by the other component, the O2, and then all over our reactants. In this case, just one, two in front of that, so that's raised to the second power. That would be our equilibrium for this reaction. And if we had actual concentrations that we knew, we could plug those in and find out what is that actual equilibrium constant equal to, which is what we'll do on the next one of these. So this is just introduction. What is equilibrium? What does it mean when I say dynamic equilibrium, equilibrium constants, capital K, and how do you express that for a specific reaction? Um, so nice little short intro video. I've got a couple more of these. Like I said, we'll work some actual problems on the next one um, and eventually get into uh, some things uh, how can we affect that equilibrium constant if we start 
tweaking that reaction, the concentrations or the temperatures. Uh, Umbrella Academy, season two. Bye.